CCK began, little did we know the extent we are going to get to. But I'm telling you, the best is yet to come. So join me tonight as our pastor, our father in the Lord, the convener of the GCK, defender of the faith, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumuye, to bring the word of life to every one of us again. Put your hand together as we welcome our father to the pulpit. Pastor, praise the Lord. If you are there and you are expecting that the goodness in the gospel will reach out to you tonight, everybody everywhere I said, praise the Lord. The Lord has been saving souls, restoring backsliders, doing good in every life, and healing the sick, delivering the oppressed, even raising the dead. Since we started this global crusade, the gospel, the good news, the glad tidings to every creature. And the Lord is still at work. And your life, it'll work tonight. Amen. Your family, it'll work tonight. Amen. Transformation total, complete, entire transformation because of his triumph. He'll do it in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. But I want to tell you something. That you're not just there, looking here and there. If you came for something, pay attention. And whatsoever he says unto you, do it. That's the price you pay. It's died on the cross of Calvary. It's provided everything. But you don't just fold your hand and close your mouth and close your eyes and just bend down as if rain you are coming, okay, I'm here. He'll tell you something. And whatsoever he tells you, don't say, there's no price to pay. There is nothing I will do. There is something you will do. And when he tells you, here is what you do. This is what you do. That price you pay. And if the Bartimaeus was called by Christ, he had a garment and was going to Christ. A price to pay. He removed that garment that will hinder him, that will stop him. He laid it down and he went to Christ. Whatsoever he says unto you, do it. Look at Zacchaeus. He wanted the salvation of the Lord. Yes, Christ is Savior. He'll tell you something to do. You abandon your past life. You abandon your past evil. Lord, half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything with wrong accusation i restore it for full there is a price to pay look at the prodigal son the prodigal son had been in the far country now he came to himself and he had a price to pay all the friends behind all the things he had enjoyed as a prodigal runaway son, he had to abandon that. He couldn't carry all his friends along. There is a price to pay. And whatsoever he says unto you, do it. Here comes Christ. When did Lazarus die? Four days ago, and is buried. Come on. Take ye away the stone. That is the price you pay. Lord, it's thinking by now. If you believe, you will see the resurrection power of the Lord. Somebody shout, Amen. Amen. The price to pay. Christ 
will not take away the stone for you. They went and took away the stone. That, in their own case, was the price they will pay. There is a price to pay. Yes, he died for you. And you pay attention. And whatsoever he says unto you, do it. He require you. He'll tell you to take that stone upon belief away. Paul the apostle, what things were gain to me? Them I count as dung. I to push aside all that position, all that possession, where the Sanhedrin, and that's how he got the salvation and the service there is a price to pay and so as you come tonight are you listening to the word of god i don't want you to just you know hang down your hands no price to pay no repentance no turning away from sin i am here lord bless me whatsoever you says unto you do it i will somebody there i will that's how we get salvation that's how we get the forgiveness of the lord that's how we get relationship with the lord he'll tell you something and then you bow and bend and you say lord thank you i will bow your head and let us pray father in the mighty name of jesus we look up to you tonight and lord we are not going to set another standard and we're not going to have our own terms but your term your condition we're going to fulfill and we're asking lord that your miracle of salvation your miracle of healing your miracle of deliverance will come to everyone willing tonight in jesus name and we pray that the power, the power of heaven, the glory of heaven, the grace of heaven will come upon every life tonight in Jesus' name. Grant us the willingness that whatsoever you say unto us, we will do and our lives will never be the same again in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. We're still in the book of Daniel. And in Daniel chapter 8 today, I'm looking at verse 25. Daniel chapter 8, and I'm reading from verse 25. And I'm reading the last line of verse 25. It says, he shall also stand against the prince of princes. He, the negative man, the son of perdition, the man of sin, he, the one representing Satan in these last days, he, the Antichrist, opposed to Christ, opposed to the salvation of man, he also shall stand against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. The devil will be broken. Satan, Lucifer, will be broken. The Antichrist, opposed to righteousness, he'll be broken. And every problem in your life, sin, sickness, satanic attack, everything broken tonight in Jesus' name. He shall be broken without hands. I come to talk to you tonight on the final triumph of the Prince of princes the final triumph of the prince of princes there are many princes on earth there are princes and principalities and power there are princes of perdition there is the prince of princes our lord jesus christ and if there is prince of peace his name shall be called wonderful counselor the eternal everlasting father and the prince of peace and when 
the principalities and the powers and when all the principalities and powers of darkness when they come against the prince of peace and the prince of princes that principality that power will be broken in jesus name i was waiting for you amen the final triumph and today he comes because he is triumphant the final triumph that brings transformation that brings salvation that brings healing that brings deliverance that triumph of the prince of princes the three things we're looking at number one the transgressors trampled under the prince of perdition the transgressor the way of the transgressor is hard the way of the hardened sinner is hard the way of the evil doer is hard all those transgressors if they don't come to christ the only one who can deliver them they are trampled under the prince of perdition number two the total triumph of the prince of princes the total complete triumph of the prince of princes that prince of, pri of princes is here tonight and every yoke in your life it will destroy every evil in your life it will cast down and throw away from your life in jesus name number three is the trustworthy transformation by the prince of peace the trustworthy transformation by the prince of peace look at number one number one we're looking at the transgressor trampled under the prince of perdition in Daniel chapter 8 I'm reading from verse 7 Daniel chapter 8 verse 7 and I saw him come close unto the ram and he was moved with cholera that he is with uh, with anger with fury and he was moved with a temper of uh, annoyance and he says against him and he smote the ram and break his two horns and there was no power in the ram to stand before him but he cast him down to the ground and stamped upon him, trampled upon him, and there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand. I've been talking to you about the powers of the emperors and of the empires. We have the Babylon, and we have the Middle Persian, and we have the Greeks, and we have the Romans, and this is selecting two of them now. It says the ram, and it's standing for the, for the Greeks, Christian Empire, he had two horns, and he was in his own time, it was mighty and powerful. But now, the one that came after him, the one represented by iron, it says, he came against him and he confronted him. He got him down, trampled upon him, and there was no one to help. It's the story of humanity that since the time of Adam and Eve, and since they ate the forbidden fruit, they, they might, you know, before the real trouble comes, it's like their power, they have an ability they have and whatever they thought they had and then lucifer satan the devil comes he gains any life every life and he gets them down and then they try to fight but they cannot overcome they use all the charms they have but the charms cannot deliver them from satan and they use all the idolatry and idol worship they have and the idolatry could not deliver them they try science they try traditional they try the native strength and native power they try scientific power and no one could deliver them from the hand of that representative of Satan. That's what we have been. And Jesus Christ himself, he calls that Satan the prince of this world. And the whole world had been suffering under the power of that prince. But thank God, the real prince has now come. 
with power, with authority, with anointing that breaks every yoke out of your life. But for you to understand what this priest we're talking about, the priest of perdition, what he has done, what he's doing, what he will yet do in the far future. John chapter 14, we're looking at verse 30. John chapter 14, verse 30, hereafter, I will not talk much with you for the prince of this world cometh, the prince of this world cometh, is the prince of corruption. is the one that corrupts the lives of everyone, is the prince of the carnal, is the prince of the worldly, is the prince of the rebellious, is the prince of the disobedient, is the prince of the sinner, all the people that live in this world, that Lucifer, that prince, the one that controls the mind of people, and it shows people go this way, go into the tunnel, and go into darkness, and go into evil, and go into dungeon, he controls all the people of the world, the people that have not known the Lord, and Jesus said, the prince of this world cometh he comes to everyone he even dare to come to Christ and he said if you are the son of God command that these stones will become bread and Jesus said it is written and what is written for you is written against the devil you didn't hear that one I said what is written for you is written against the devil and then he, he came again and said all right look at the pinnacle get in there and jump down because the scripture has said he even tried to quote scripture anybody can quote scripture but he misquoted the scripture and Jesus said it is written again thou shall not test that you are not tempt the Lord thy God then he came again and he said only one thing more and if you can do this he wanted to corrupt him the prince of power and the prince of peace the prince that has all power on earth and in heaven this prince of perdition wanted to corrupt the lord he said bow down to me and i will give you all these things and then again jesus overcame him you will overcome Amen. i will overcome what i'm telling you is is the prince of this world defilement is the prince of that and all destruction is the prince of that and premature death is the prince of that the filthiness you find in your life in the life of anyone is the one in charge is the one in control the greed and the covetousness we find in the world he is the prince of the world that causes all that the people they will even take the life of another person kill another person so that they can have his property all that covetousness all that greed and all that evil he is the prince of the world of this world and Jesus said he cometh he cometh he came and he's still coming and he comes to everyone he comes to tell you why don't you go this wrong direction why don't you go into darkness why don't you worship idol why don't you deceive your neighbor why don't you steal why don't you be disobey God and then you'll be independent and you'll be free he comes to everyone but Jesus said he has nothing in me and the Lord will so transform your life tonight change your life tonight that when that prince of perdition when he comes he will have nothing in you in Jesus name look at Ephesians chapter 2 Ephesians chapter 2 I'm reading there from verse 2 it says wherein in time past you walked according to the cause of this world according to the prince of the power of the air that's the man the man of sin the prince of the power of the air and all the astrology all the evil things people look at they're looking at the zodiac they're looking at the stars and they say the stars will predict their future and their life he is the prince of the power 
of the air of the people uh, they go to the sea they go to the bush they go to the forest in uh, the prince of the power of everything you find there and once you give yourself to him and you give your life to him and he says obey me you say yes sir you make him your master he'll control your life he'll control your destiny and forever you stay with him and live with him in hellfire forever and ever it says he the devil is the prince of the power of the air the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience look at verse 3 in verse 3 among whom also we all had a conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and we were by nature by nature by nature all the offsprings of adam all the descendants of adam the nature we had is the nature of that prince of the power of the air now when we say sin s i n that satan in nature that the nature of every man satan finds a way to put a literal injection of his own nature a literal injection of his own sinfulness a literal injection of his own rebellion and when satan in nature comes and take over your nature then all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It says the power and the thing that now works in the children of disobedience, they fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And we were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But thank God, Satan will lose you tonight. He will not control your life anymore. Whatsoever he says unto you, do it. If you have to take up that garbage of Bartimaeus and throw it away, that's the price you pay. And if you have to think, what things were gained to me? Them I counted loss for Christ. And all the authority of the Sanhedrin, the position you have in religion, if you have to cast that aside, like Saul that became Paul, that's the price you pay. And if you have to take that stone away, the stone of from belief and the stone of finality that your Lazarus is dead and you, the real sin in you that is dead and you have put the final stone there and the Lord is saying take away the stone and you don't argue whatsoever he says unto you and you take away that stone of unbelief your life will come back again resurrection will come back again in your life in Jesus name it might be that you have taken up the net again you knew the Lord before and you forsook your net and you forsook the fish and now after some years following the Lord you say I go up fishing again and then you are by the seed side now and children have you any bread there and then you say no he says throw your net over there and you throw your net there and you catch a lot of fish and you begin to count 153 and now you bring everything to the shore and now it says Peter Simon Peter son of Jonas lovest thou me more than these look at your fish and look at the face of Christ are you still going to follow me I want to take you on a journey and get you to the day of Pentecost I want to take you on a journey and take you to the day of power I want to take you on a journey and you're going to have in one message, in one preaching, 3,000 souls to be converted. I want to take you on a journey. I'm going to take you to the Acts of the Apostles. Your shadow will heal the sick. And then you'll tell her, yes, take up your bed and walk. You're going to reach the dead. You'll come to that Dorcas and you'll say, Dorcas, rise up. And the power of resurrection that you have never tasted will come unto you. But, 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 
Look at your fish and look at my face. There is a price to pay. Lovest thou me more than these? And then you say, yes, Lord. And you forsake that. And you come to the Lord. A new power, a new strength, a new anointing will come upon your life tonight. In Jesus' name. You are looking for wine and there's no wine. The wine has finished. The wine of joy in your family, it's finished. And the wine of a satisfaction in your life has finished. And 